Defined as events where magma escapes from a volcano, volcanic eruptions are seriously scary. And be it expelling toxic gases, ejecting lava, or creating landslides, these eruptions usually cause massive damage in their wake. Measured with a scale known as the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI, eruptions are ranked from 0 to 8, with the 0 being a gentle outpouring of steam and an 8 being a mega colossal eruption. Now let's jump right in and count down the top 10 biggest volcanic eruptions in history on this episode of Super Freaky Science. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay posted on our latest videos. Santa Maria, Guatemala may sound like a perfect vacation spot, however, you may want to reconsider. As it turns out, the local Santa Maria volcano is one of the most active in the world. Although its activity is usually rather minor, a massive VEI-6 ranked eruption occurred there a little over a hundred years ago. Erupting in 1902, it caused at least 5,000 deaths, and this was primarily because the local people assumed that because it had not erupted for over 500 years, that it was harmless. Now the eruption created a massive crater in the mountain's southwest flank, and the resulting ash cloud darkened the skies of Guatemala for days. Eventually, this cloud traveled an astounding 1,200 kilometers and was seen in cities as far away as San Francisco. Although this eruption happened about 2,000 years ago, it was a significant event in the ancient world and is the subject of intense historical analysis today. Mount Vesuvius has erupted many times in its infamous career as a volcano. However, no eruption was as devastating as the one in 79 AD completely burying the nearby cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum in ash, the eruption killed almost 16,000 of the area's 20,000 inhabitants. Yet despite the widespread recording of the event, it was not until 1592 that Pompeii's location was rediscovered, and not until 1709 that Herculaneum was rediscovered. By the 1960s, both cities had been largely excavated, and what is incredible is that the thick layer of ash that blackened the town also protected protected it against looting and the elements. As a result, both Herculaneum and Pompeii have become popular tourist sites. So if you'd like to take a peek into the lives of the ancient Romans, we recommend staying away from the cheesy Hollywood dramas and taking a look at the sites for yourself. A very recent example, the Mount Pinatubo eruption was the second largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. On June 15, 1991, the volcano erupted, creating an ash cloud that reached an incredible height of 35 kilometers. Unfortunately, this eruption had truly global consequences, with 20 million tons of toxic sulfur dioxide being ejected into the stratosphere. This caused global temperatures to plummet by about half a degree Celsius for an entire year, leading to large global fluctuations in weather and agricultural production. Although the 847 casualties from the disaster was a relatively low number, more than 200,000 people were left homeless as a result of the eruption, and the total economic cost was estimated to be upwards of $700 million, which amounts to a staggering $1.3 billion today. Although its VEI rating of 3 may suggest the eruption was rather tame, don't be fooled. While the 1985 eruption of Colombia's Nevado del Ruiz may have been incredibly strong in itself, the resulting mudslide it caused was catastrophic. Burying the town of Amaro, Colombia, it took the lives of about 24,000 people, which amounted to about 70% of the town's population. Unfortunately, this death toll was so high largely due to the Colombian government, who decided to do very little in preparation despite the early warnings. Yet in a surprising twist, one of the few positives of this disaster is that it led to the formation of the International Volcano Disaster Assistance Program, or VDAP, which to this day tracks and monitors the world's 1,550 potential active volcanoes. So I guess that just goes to show that some good news can always come out of a tragic situation. Another example of a volcanic disaster where the VEI was relatively low is the explosion of Mount Unzen. It remains Japan's deadliest volcanic eruption. Although it is unclear whether it was the eruption itself 
or an earthquake that collapsed the dome of the volcano. Either way, it generated a massive landslide that buried the city of Shimabara and later flowed into the ocean. This then triggered a tsunami that caused massive 57 meter high waves to devastate the region's coasts. The catastrophe killed about 15,000 people directly, and agriculture in the region took a massive hit for many years afterwards. Although the Ilopango eruption happened about 1,500 years ago, its effects were felt and documented by civilizations across the planet. Locally, the eruption was so large that it would have likely registered as a 6 or 7 VEI, and the 10,000 square kilometers of waist-deep ash it created is thought to have destroyed several Mayan cities. However, beyond the physical devastation of the eruption, the skies were filled with ash and dust for more than a year killing up to 100,000 people and displacing more than 400,000. Yet most notably of all, the eruption is thought to be a potential source of the global cooling of 535 to 536 AD. With this cooling leading to widespread crop failures and famines in the far off civilizations of ancient Rome and Imperial China, if this volcano was truly its source, there's no doubt that it was incredibly strong. Although Martinique may seem like a tropical paradise at first sight, Mount Pelee, which is still active to this day, has ensured that it has not become a tourist hotspot. Although it has had a number of smaller eruptions, its most famous one occurred on May 8, 1902. During this event, an infernal ejection of hot gas and volcanic debris completely destroyed the city of St. Pierre in a matter of minutes, killing approximately 30,000 people. In fact, it was so destructive in the local area, only three people from the town of St. Pierre survived. However, with this eruption initiating the study of volcanology, it was a truly pivotal moment in the history of modern geology. Unique due to its longevity, in June of 1783, Iceland's Lockheed volcano began to erupt and would not stop until February of 1784, nearly eight months later. This led to a supply of toxic gases that was surprisingly not great for the local inhabitants. In fact, it caused an estimated death toll of between 20 and 25 percent, with 80 percent of Iceland's sheep and 50 percent of its cattle and horses also dying as a result of the famine and fluoride poisoning that ensued. Beyond the immediate area, Europe as a whole was faced with a toxic haze that caused extremely hot temperatures, poisonous clouds, and heavy fogs well into 1784. This led to widespread famines and increased poverty levels across the continent. And interestingly enough, many historians point to these famines as an indirect cause of the French Revolution. Yet the revolution we know the volcano certainly did affect was the American Revolution. Although the tangible effects were pretty negligible, it did cause a massive dip in temperatures and severe blizzards across the east coast of the United States. It was precisely these snowstorms that delayed the journeys of a number of congressmen traveling to Annapolis to vote on the Treaty of Paris, which was the document that formally ended the American Revolution. So I guess it's safe to say that this volcano was revolutionary in more ways than one. Occurring in August of 1883, the eruption of the Indonesian volcano Krakatau completely decimated the island on which it resided. One of the deadliest in modern history, it reportedly killed over 36,000 people and caused an eruption with a force equivalent to that of 200 megatons of TNT. For reference, that's 200 times the strength of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb. Consisting of four massive explosions, they were so loud that they were heard over 3,000 kilometers away in Perth, Australia, and so strong that the shockwaves circled the planet at least seven times. It also resulted in a massive tsunami, with its 120-foot tall waves destroying at least 165 coastal villages. Due to the explosions hurling an estimated 45 cubic kilometers of debris into the atmosphere, Dawn did not return to the local area for three days, and ash fell on ships as far as 6,000 kilometers away. Most notably, the eruption had serious atmospheric effects. Blocking out much of the Earth's sunlight, global temperatures fell as much as 1.2 degrees Celsius over the next five years, completely destroying crops worldwide and leading to widespread agricultural failure. 
Hands down, I think it's safe to say that the Mount Tambora eruption that occurred on April 10th, 1815 was nothing short of catastrophic. The only eruption to ever record a rating of 7 VEI in the modern age, it let out so much lava at its peak that its per second flow volume was about 178 times that of Niagara Falls. One of the deadliest eruptions in recent human history, the volcanic ash it emitted into the sky and large tsunamis it caused unfortunately claimed the lives of about 100,000 people in the immediate area. Yet it most notably caused global temperatures to drop by about 0.4 to 0.7 degrees Celsius. Lasting from 1815 until about 1819, the immediate aftermath was so severe that 1816 is known as the year without a summer. This year without a summer was so cold that the failed harvests that occurred worldwide indirectly led to the deaths of about 90,000 people. Thanks for watching Super Freaky Science, and don't forget to subscribe.